Well, I guess that does it. Despite everything that I've said, my, my toughest efforts, Baylor men's basketball is still going to win a national championship. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Jonathan Chupacabra. Jonathan Chumbuck. I, I like you have so you're as as someone who gets paid millions of dollars to say a person's name. And you have not only a guide in front of you, but also an audio recording of him saying Jonathan Chamwa Chachua. You've got to get it right. And the Baylor Bears got it right by putting him back on the floor. This team is D-I-F-F different. Correct. C-O-R-R. Correct. I'm Drake Toll. That's Cameron Stewart from both of us. Work for Inside the Bears <clears throat> Sports Illustrated. Thank you for making Locked On Baylor your first listen every single day. And happy Monday. You have a good weekend? I did. I never I, asked I, you said on, I asked on Friday, I was like, y'all mind if I have a good weekend? And t- doggone it, I did, man. Everyone's I ideas. did. Went to a little basketball game, uh-huh. watched some movies, didn't do much else. I hear you're doing 200 movies this year. 200 movies this year. That's really if good. you didn't want to follow at Real Cam Stewart on Twitter before, now you do. I just put out uh, yesterday, Sunday, my highest rated one so far this year. Wow. Everything everywhere all at once. No, I watched that last year. And it uh, probably would not have garnered as high a grade as Lawrence of Arabia just did. Lawrence of Arabia. 89 it to does 62. Need to be, it does need to be half the running time, though, which I did say in the tweet. It, it does not need to be that long. Uh, anyway. Go ahead. Shawshank Redemption is good. Um, we're going to have a slow day here someday, and we're going to break that all down. We can. And then when the summer hits. As, for, as of now, though, yeah. like... 89-62 over Texas Tech. The Baylor football team beat Texas <clears throat> Tech by 28. The men's basketball, try as they might, just couldn't quite get there. Um, this, no. I, I, and look, we can we have we can have a discussion. <clears throat> Is Jonathan Chamo Chachua the reason that this team looks different? Uh, the the overall catalyst for why Baylor won by 27 points. That there, you could argue both sides, but it, it clicked. Something clicked. This was far and away the most complete game of the year. Oh my god, dude! That second half—I'm not kidding. That second half totally changed my projection of this team. Totally did. I was almost falling into the Drake Toll pit of like, what is this team going to be? And then I watched that second half, mm. and I was like, this is it. This is what this was supposed to look like. This is what this team was supposed to be. It's the best half we've seen against a real team the whole year. It was glorious, and look. The placebo of that is Jonathan Chamwa Chachua. So is he the only reason? No, not technically, but you saw how it was without him. You've seen how it was for a game, but really one half with him. And look what happened. Look what happened, Drake. I wrote about it, man. He he just uh he opens up a lot of things for the Bears on both sides of the ball or both sides, both sides of the court. We're gonna get to that. But yes, I do think he was the difference in making this team built different. And it's so exciting. I'm I'm all in now. I'm all in. There's no turning back now. If you thought if I thought they were elite before, oh boy. Yeah. Hang on. Well, and, and two, they, they've got Oklahoma coming up, TCU and West Virginia. Yeah. Two of those three are wildly winnable. Like not just winnable, you have to win them if you want any fighter's chance. You're already outside looking in for and the third team is reeling, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean reeling. You're you're of these Don't three full deck, but yeah. If you want to win a big twelve <clears> championship, you are look, it's not it's not there for you. You're not squarely in that conversation of, oh, this team's path is, it's there. Uh, the the schedule down the stretch, it's the Big 12. It's not going to be easy. So you've got to win the games you're supposed to win, period, and then upset a couple folks on the road that you're not supposed to. So these next three you should win. Jonathan Chamo Chachua back. You just won by 27 against a Texas Tech team that thought that it was back. They had won two straight coming into yeah. this game. They were playing good basketball. I What I circle here, Baylor – had shot 36% on average in the last four games. Again, winning three out of those four, which is wild to me. They shot 54%. Yes. 10 of 24 for three. They've done been making. They've done been making 10 three-pointers a game, but on 10 more shots exactly. than what they took on exactly. Saturday. This is, it's not volume. This wasn't volume shooting. This was good offense, which has not been the case 
for a good majority of conference play. That is exactly it, Drake. See, you you nailed it. You thumbtack nailed it right there. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just a different looking offense. And again, I, <laughs> so much of that has to be about a guy in the post who can score. And he only hit one ba- basket in the post on Saturday. He but did. JTT, man, he runs the floor like a guard. And so look at the, he's so great in transition on both ends, right? And look at the bench points from Saturday 26 to four for Baylor. That's the only stat they dominated in, really. That's the only one that you were like, oh, okay, that's how Baylor won the game. And it didn't even feel like that during the game. So it just allows some room to operate for these guards when you Uh have to pay attention to someone down low offensively. And it helped out with Jalen Bridges, too, who had one of his best games of the season. And it, it just looked more fluid. It wasn't, hey, let's dribble it for 15 seconds and pass around the perimeter and take a three and not even not even a look to the paint, let alone the touch. You know, I, I we said it, what, a week and a half, two weeks ago now about this team being elite. And you said no because they have no post scoring. And I pushed back on it by saying, you know, some of the great teams at all levels don't have post scoring. Yeah. But they do have a threat in the post, most of them. And I think that is the difference now where you have a guy who is super efficient, who can score 10 points on seven shots Um, to have someone like that for Baylor is just so huge, especially the way they like to play on the perimeter. And it really showed, it really showed on Saturday. Like you said, I mean, similar three point makes similar three point percentage. And yet you won the game by 27 points. Yeah. That is the big difference so far. Yeah, big. Um, the only guy we haven't talked about yet. Remiss not to. I uh, before we even get to that, Flo Thamba. Um, I the, look. I have not been on the Flo Thamba train here recently. Obviously, mm-hmm. I've been very outspoken against Flo. I hope I don't see him in any <laughs> sketchy places coming moving forward because I probably deserve what's coming. The I thought he is, and his stat line shows a much better performance. He only played eighteen minutes. That look. That's the perfect Flo niche. That Chamo Chachua. Josh O can both give complimentary minutes to Flo Thamba and he doesn't have to be on the court 25 or more minutes. If Flo Thamba is on the court 25 or more minutes for Baylor, that's not a very good sign for Baylor. And in this game, Thamba had nine points, three for four shooting, three of three at the free throw line where he's really good now for some yes. reason. Four boards awesome. and four assists in 18 minutes. It's opened up Flo Thamba's game, which is good. And I don't know if this is a direct correlation to... Uh, John Machacho coming back. I don't think it is, but Jalen Bridges played 26 minutes. Adam Flagler, 36. LJ Cryer, 31. Keontae George, 31. Five minutes less at, at the least than the rest of those guys and outscored all of them. We, oh, yeah. a, he's not, he's not flashy. We don't talk about him a lot. We probably won't be talking about him a lot because those, the three headed guards, they get most of the conversation, but Jalen Bridges is, why this team, a big catalyst for why this team wins. Yes. And in fact, one of our friends who works in the athletic department um, said to me yesterday, and I hadn't thought about it as much um, and I didn't push back on the point. um, But he said, this team goes as Jalen Bridges goes. Mm. And I looked, thought about it a little more. And I said, that's pretty much exactly right. I mean, we, We were on him about his offensive game and a little bit defensively at the beginning of the conference schedule, they start 0-3. You know, he slowly gets back into a groove um, and they start winning some games. And he doesn't look like the player he was in the winning streak Monday night against UT. He wasn't terrible, but he didn't look the same player. And they lose. And he has his best game of the season probably. And it's the biggest win of the conference schedule. So, like, yes, this team is absolutely going where he goes. And... A little bit more about Flo Thamba, too, is we had talked about how he didn't have the safety blanket, both offensively or defensively, that he's had in the past, whether it be Mark Vidal or Jeremy Sohan or Matthew Meyer. And this year, that is Jonathan Chamochachua. And we've seen now it helps him out offensively as well. I mean, we saw it at the tail end of last season when he's put together some good, solid games. um, And we were all saying... He needs to come back another year. That's going to be a huge help for Baylor. Um, And he does, and we didn't quite get the production that we were looking for. 
And now it's coming because all of a sudden you do have that slasher, that guy who can run the floor, guard a couple of different positions, and can play inside out offensively. And that's what he's got in Jonathan Chamwa Chachua. And it allows Jalen Bridges to do that a little bit more as well. So tying it back into the point here. Jalen Bridges is going to be, I think, the rest of the season, the stylistic offensively as Matthew Meyer was last year. Hopefully a little bit more production, um, but he's another guy who can play efficient. inside out. Yes, more efficiency. And efficient. Yeah, that, more that's, efficiency. that's what Matthew, we're hoping for. Like Matthew, Matthew Meyer, Meyer did was, give some frustrating offensive games. He was volume shooting terrible, a lot. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think Bridges is going to be like that. I'm... You know, I'm a big Celtics fan. I watch the Celtics a lot. So this is basically for Brandon McKinnon and McKinnon only. Uh, but it's like having Al Horford out there who's only taking – he's a big guy, but he's out on the perimeter a good amount, and he's never taking a bad shot out there. You're never like, no, not the time, Al, or no, you're too cold. Like, Jalen Bridges needs to be that. Like, I'm, he can hit shots out there, but I don't want him shooting at the volume of Matthew Meyer yes. or LJ Cryer right. or Adam Flagler, obviously. So – uh, that's where the efficiency comes into play. And uh, and that's what I, I'm hoping he is the rest of the season. I enjoy the idea that this team goes as Jalen Bridges goes. I would Take hate that. the idea that this team goes as Caleb Lohner goes. But first, <laughs> let me tell everybody at home about FanDuel, the official betting partner of Locked On. FanDuel is my spot for the Super Bowl. Super Bowl is coming up. It's 57, I think. And right now, there's a no sweat first bet. No sweat first bet. You don't even have to sweat it. You put $3,000, 3000 3000 on any bet. And if you lose it, they give you $3,000 in bonus bets. If you win it, you win $3,000. Um, so basically it's, again, it's no sweat. There's like, the, this is, you don't have to sweat this. It's fine. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads and who's going to score a touchdown. And they are an official betting partner because they are America's number one sports book. When I look at all my, all my lines, like, Hey, Baylor's a three point favorite. That's all FanDuel. So FanDuel lets you bet on everything. The, the, the app is safe. It's an app. It's secure. It's super easy to use. Even if you can't bet legally, wherever you are, they've got all kinds of cool features. You can check out game stats and, game breakdowns and you can get your winnings instantly if you can bet on the app so go to fanduel.com slash locked on that's all caps locked on to claim your no sweat first bet super bowl 57 fanduel.com slash locked on make every moment more with fanduel the official sports partner of the national football league i think caleb loner's a nice guy probably uh, is yeah i bet if caleb loner and i sat down and played a game of skip bow we'd probably be like ah Dude, you're cool. You're 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 genuinely good, dude. How was your time at BYU? Um, there are times now. I didn't think this way earlier in the season because he played so hard. He still plays hard. He tries. Yeah. He does try. Yeah. Uh, there are times now where he goes on the floor, and I think, oh, this might not go that well. It might not go that well. And look, no, no shade on Dale Bonner. Dale Bonner was taken out of the rotation because he he just wasn't up to speed with what this team is, and. I God, I hope it changes for him, but I yeah. think Caleb Lohner's getting close. Yeah, and I, I had this feeling about Langston Love um, early in the season, especially early in the conference season, where I'm like, this guy has a role to play here. I know, like, I see the vision. You know 100%. what I mean? I, I see what he's going to contribute to this team. He just isn't doing it right now, and he's losing confidence, and it was, like, tough to watch. And you're That's like, good. is he going to – like, I don't want to play him. And I understand why Scott's playing him so much because he wants him to play out of it. And eventually, Langston Love came around, right? And we're starting to see now what he is for this team. And we've seen what the team is without him on Monday night, last Monday night. And Kale Bloner, I think, is going through that right now. Um, you said it. I mean, he plays hard and he has a role to play in this rotation. And with a guy coming in like Shamwan Chachua, that frees up um, some more minutes for you know, a Josh O or a flow or those complimentary minutes like yeah. we talked about earlier, those minutes start to probably fall off of Caleb Lohner's plate first. And he had one of the most comical sequences I've ever seen <laughs> the other day, two missed free throws, um, missed a rebound at the other end. And then they still got a breakout and he rim stuffed himself on a dunk. <laughs> and it was just, but the man played three possessions with only one shoe. Okay. You can't say he's not trying out there playing hard. But 
I just love him to grab some more rebounds. You know what I mean? If I had a nickel, nickel for each time it went off his knee, went off his foot, and out of bounds, oh boy, I'd be too rich for your show. I'll tell you that. Um, so I hope that comes around. I really do. Um, they could. One, use- he was once Baylor's leading rebounder and still gets boards. Like he had four boards yeah, in twelve. Minutes. He does. He does. Um, I just wish they had that slasher, that defensive guy like Bridges who could guard a couple of different uh, positions. Because yesterday or Saturday, he didn't. He didn't do that all too well. Uh, do you have a point that you'd like to make, Drake? Before I go I have- into some of the numbers, yeah. <laughs> A question. question yeah uh when Jalen Bridges subs off of the basketball floor who typically comes in for him uh, usually Caleb Lohner yeah uh yeah. what if I told you Caleb Lohner played 12 minutes and has a negative one plus oh, minus a minus yeah, one say that. Yeah. um yep. and that Jalen Bridges in 26 minutes has a plus 31 plus minus again leading everyone by the way who yeah. comes in for who and, and some regression. There. And Loner's the only one who didn't play exclusively in garbage time. That was a minus on Saturday. Yeah. And Jake Youngkin, sadly minus one. Yes, poor <laughs> Jake Youngkin. Zach Loveday, who did <sighs> score, ends up as a minus. And that doesn't tell the whole story, but it tells a bit of a story when Jalen Bridges is plus 31. And we had that moment of panic when Bridges went down in the first half. That was a hard fall. I was like, oh boy, tailbone injury. Here we go. Just as soon as we get JTT Buttocks. back. Sorry. And yeah, both Jackson Posey and I meeting at the game outside the bathroom. Nothing weird going on here. It's just halftime. Um, we were like, I think at the same time said, you can't start loner. Can't do it. Yeah. Can't do it. Even even when he's going well, you don't really want to start loner. Like he's not really a starter for, for this team and, and this team's ambitions. But like I said, with Langston Love, hopefully he can play his way through it. Hopefully. Um but it, it looked like for a second there, like this was our Murphy's Law season that we finally get JTT back. It's this awesome emotional moment. When he hits that first three, it might be the loudest I've ever heard the F Shack, which look, I've seen some good teams in there. I've seen some not so good, not bad teams. That was probably the loudest I've ever heard it. It was unhinged. And then we have the best sequence of the season because he hits the three. They get a turnover, live ball turnover, Jalen Bridges dunk in transition, and immediately as that happens, the place is en fuego, and he's on the ground kind of writhing in pain for a little bit. Thankfully, that did not happen. Um, but that was a, a long way of saying Caleb Lohner might need to just play himself out of this. Here. Yeah. Because he's not going to be Jalen Bridges. Like right. I'm not expecting him to be that. And he, but look, him and he, Dale needs Bonner be, both. he needs to give the production of what – Chama Chachua gave you in 2021. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, he, he probably played. doesn't have the energy. Like, Chama well, Chachua remember, has more energy. And every day, John, better, better defender. well, if we're talking like 2021 mm-hmm. as in the end of that championship season, yes. every day, John played a lot of minutes in the national title because Flo Thamba was in foul trouble. Yes. Like, and they both got in foul trouble, but Chama Chachua, like, held it down. Uh, if someone gets in foul, if Jalen Bridges gets in foul trouble and Caleb Loner plays a majority of the national championship, again, I'm sure he's a great guy. I'm sure he's a very nice guy um, and we would be great friends, but you know, you know, struggles a little bit. Uh, that moment though, before we go, I, I, today I'm going to include the press conference with Chamo Chachua. It's a good one. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, I'm not going to include Mark Adams. Who's just a sad, sad dog. Dude, just, broken. Absolutely broken. And again, you and I, we talked about this Saturday. It's not for lack of his team's effort or ability it's just he's in the big 12 like I, you just can't catch a break here like i'm sorry it's a little man. bit of ability yeah you are in the top five in every other conference in basketball um yeah but not here man i'm sorry and it's gonna break your will for sure that you will miss the tournament by virtue of the fact of how strong your conference is um sorry mark but thanks man before Oops, we get the into the old chombo chachua uh, post-game press conference i wasn't in the building I had to watch on TV doing some volunteer work with the Baylor football program. So you were walk me through um, every day. John checks in. Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. So first off before the game, like 10 minutes left in warmups, maybe they play this. uh, They play part of his testimony, that big 16 minute video he did a couple Mm -hmm. months ago. I play like two minutes of it. 
and it's kind of the best bits. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Hype video for one player. All right. I see why. And then at the end, it says, welcome back, John. Mm. And the place is like ready to go, ready to go. And I mean, we had talked about this on Saturday as well, but I didn't expect him to play all that much. I was thinking like, you know, six or eight minutes. That's a playing 14 and doesn't look like, look like he's missed like a week or two with injury, which is incredible. But he checks into the game with like, like six or seven minutes in and he checks in and this place just went bananas, bananas, standing ovation, like, like he deserved. Um, It was awesome. It was genuinely one of the great moments that I've seen inside that stadium and around Baylor. Uh, Just because not only is he a fan favorite, he embodies, you know, what Baylor's all about, what the program's all about. um, And had worked so hard to get back and it was just so cool. And then the three. So the three, I, Honestly, I'm I'm going to be honest with all of you people here. I watch more Baylor than almost anybody, right? I had totally forgotten he had hit any threes. Like, if you had told me that that was his first three of his career, I would have said absolutely yes. Apparently, he had a couple last year. I don't remember them. Um, but he hits this straightaway three. And I look back at Grace. I'm like, what the hell just happened? What just happened? Like, that was, that was the miracle of the game, not – not him coming back 257 days, 357 days later uh, and looking like he had missed a beat. He nails a three, two for two from three. That place, I thought the roof was going to come off. It was awesome. I don't know how else to say it, Drake. It was awesome. Nerve damage. You want me to say I cried? Leg, Is that what like, you want? Lips up. I mean, maybe you did. I, I did. Yeah, I Women got were one. crying. I, yeah. Women were weeping. Um some woman gave birth in the stadium and named the kid Jonathan Chamwachachua Smith. It was crazy. God, that's going to be complicated crazy. to explain. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, I and Eagle will never get that one right. No. No way. No his son, he's a... Oh, yes. Yeah, Bill Raptor. <laughs> if you watch the highlights, <laughs> that includes like every basket, which I did this morning, <laughs> he does that at the beginning. Like, I don't think he's even trying to formulate words anymore. <laughs> I know, he's a legend. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. <laughs> he sounds Hi-yads. like a minor league baseball umpire ringing somebody up. Oh, Hi-yads. oh, wow. Jonathan, Jonathan Chamuchachua, before you, before you give your uh, post game press conference, Bill Bar is the bar for you. It's healthy, it's good, it tastes good. 130 calories, but 100% real chocolate. What's better than that? It's healthier. It's the healthiest thing that there is this year. You want to stay in shape? You want to get in shape? I have spring break in like four weeks. I got to work on my bod. Going to Los Cabos, Mexico. And so I got to get ready with Bill Bar. Four bar boxes of cookies and cream and double chocolate coconut puffs. It's at Walmart. Sam's Club, 13 bar box. Flavors like brownie batter churro. You can thank me later. Uh, the peanut butter, some of my favorites. That coconut almond, that'll do it for you. It's better than you know what. Built Bars at Built.com. You can also get them there. All that and more. Built.com. Built at Walmart. Built at Sam's Club. Just be built. Scott Drew, Jonathan Chamachachua, whoever. What do you got for us? It was amazing uh, just to get a chance to play in front of this crowd. Um, after 355 days, I've been counting the days. Uh, <laughs> it was just surreal. Um remember just praying in my bedroom last night, just crying about all the trials that I've been going through and just realizing that the day is actually here. Yeah, like, I'm actually playing there. I uh, feel like it was just a miracle for me to even be out there. I don't know if this is public, but I was not supposed to be back this early, but God just blessed me another time and just made my body strong really fast and made me come back from injury that nobody ever done, so. John, how do you, how'd you keep your hopes up through the last year? Uh, I just used my faith and my girlfriend and just an amazing coaching staff because I didn't want to listen to anything negative about my injury. I will only only take in like positive energy, things like you're going to play this year. You're not, you're not going to stay out for two years. Uh, you're going to be back for practice. You're going to get better next week. I was always like thinking about positive stuff and just thinking about getting better every day. How long did you have? Uh, I had two surgery. First one fixed different uh, different ligaments, and second one nerve surgery. John, kind of describe those emotions as you heard your name 
over the period <laughs> and, and checked in for that first time with about 13 minutes remaining. I mean, is uh, that surreal? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't think I've heard my name because the gym was just so loud. <laughs> <laughs> like, from the time the coach told me to get in, like, everything was just so loud. I couldn't hear anything. It felt unreal about me. Uh, and real at that moment, and I was just thanking God for just being able to put me in that position and just give me this platform. How about when you hit that first three? What was uh, that feeling like? Um, it was fun. It was fun, but um, we believe in the same old boy habits. He had better, and I just felt like it was just another shirt that I've been working on. I feel like uh, God allowed me to have extra time to work on my game, and I used it. And I felt like his work is just uh, pay enough. John, it's a big welcome back game for you, but how are you able to put those emotions aside and still have a great game? Uh, it's funny because I really try to just take in the emotions the day before. I uh, thought about it, prayed about it, thank God for it. And at the end of the day, um, I just end up Going with my always my only one routine, playing praying before the game, right after the warm up, and reminding myself to only play for another just one, and just be able to be out there and just showcase into the world that the Lord is able to make a miracle, is able to make our life perfect. Uh, we're nothing without Him, and that was how I felt about it, and just gave me that calmness of be able to play, knowing that I'm solid. You've warmed up several games. You've been out there quite a bit. Um, what made today the day? What made this the right time to, to play? Um, I've prayed about it a lot. Uh, I've had a lot of mental battles with these type of injuries because at the end of the day, uh, I'm pretty sure you can tell I'm not the same player. Like Nobody would expect me to be the same player. Uh, I've uh, had some mental battle in in a way where I was thinking about maybe I'm not good enough because I was comparing myself with my old self, but at the end of the day, I'm a different player. At the end of the day, I came back from a really bad injury. I'm using a brace that helps to lift my foot, so I'm a different player. And it took me so much time to just embrace that and just move on and just pray about it, uh, pray to God, ask him about just to help me, show me like what should be the right decision to make, when should I go out there. And the closer I was getting to this day, the more excited I felt about it, the more excited I felt about just being able to go out there, and I knew it was the right decision. So now that you've gotten back on the court, now that you've gotten into the game, what do you hope for for yourself the rest of the season? Win more games. John, is your knee feeling pretty good after the game now? Um, yes, my knee feels great. Uh, the good thing about it, we just got an amazing coaching staff and an amazing training staff. Great people around me who listen to me, listen to my body, and I really like the way they took this process the past 11 months, and I'm really just excited to see where we're going to go with that, but my knee feels great right now. It looked like you had a brace on the sideline, and then you took it off. Did you just feel like you didn't need one? Or? Uh, no, I didn't need one. I feel like it was warm enough. Oh. Uh, I would just thank them so much for being with me from day one until now and just remind them that uh, you can do anything in life with the Lord. He's able to just accomplish miracles. And me just even <coughs> stepping on the floor, still play the game that I love, uh, is just a miracle for itself. I see myself as a working miracle as a proof that a lot can affect your life in a better way. Oh, that was the post-game press conference, Baylor. Good to hear. Good to hear from John. Good to hear from John. Absolutely. This is Drake Toll. That's Cameron Stewart. Um, uh, did you notice, Drake, they didn't You they didn't ask um, him about dating Margot Robbie, Jonathan John Machachua. Yeah. They were media too scared. Well, he has did, refuted the claims. If they did, he'd make it very clear who he's actually dating. Okay? Yes. Just before his girlfriend gets upset, which I he think is great. Be, like he's going to come out and just be very, very honest, everyone. Um, this has been it always will be. Come back tomorrow. We're going to talk some football. We being me, I'm going to talk about some football and the things that I saw this weekend from Blake Shapin. Remember him? They forget he didn't think her. He didn't think his receivers. Didn't, did not thank his receivers. I hope he did this weekend. But I, I'll let that be a tease. I'll tomorrow let that be that a tomorrow. Tease. This has been always will be locked on. Thanks for making your first listen every single day. Baylor. Adios.